Hi everyone, this is Lee from Smart Excel Tools LLC. Today's video is an overview of a very useful tool called the Scatter Diagram. You may also hear them referred to as scatter plots or scattergrams and occasionally correlation charts. They're common in data analysis and every Six Sigma practitioner should be highly proficient in their use. The good news is they're really easy. The Scatter Diagram is one of the seven basic tools of quality and it usually takes the form of dots plotted on a Cartesian coordinate system. That basically means each dot has two values, and each of those values corresponds to an axis. There are more elaborate versions which have features such as a third axis, colors corresponding to values, or size corresponding to values. You could hypothetically pack five, maybe more dimensions into a scatter diagram, but they become difficult to interpret and explain with anything over the basic two-dimensional version, so I suggest sticking to two or at most three dimensions. In a moment, I'll show you how to build a scatter diagram using Microsoft Excel. I'll also show you how to build two special kinds of scatter diagrams using the free Smart Six Sigma Toolkit add-in. Let's review the elements of a scatter diagram first. Let's pull up the example here. Here's the classic scatter diagram example. And here we've got arm span in inches versus height in inches. And you see a fairly linear relationship. So what are the elements here? Well, you've got two axes, obviously. Uh, in this case, like I mentioned, one is arm span and the other is height. And you've got a constellation of dots. And something that's on here, it's not always on a scatter diagram, but probably ought to be in most cases, is a regression line. This indicates the, the um, relationship between the dots. In this case, you've got dots that are fairly linear, even though there's some noise here, but they pretty much move up at the same rate as they move out. And the tightness of that relationship is explained by the R square value, which is up here in the corner. And that can range from zero to one. Zero meaning there's no relationship. And I'll show you an example of that really quickly here. So here's one with zero relationship. You can see R square is very, very low. And on the other end is something like this that has a 0.92, which is close to one, which means they're very tightly related. Now, I'll show you one other kind here, just because, let's see here, let's click the polynomial one. So, I mentioned earlier you could have more dimensions, and probably ought to keep it to less than three, probably two in most cases. Uh, but sometimes it's helpful to have this third dimension on here, which is indicated, in this case, by size. Uh, I've also got color on here. The color does not indicate anything. It's just to separate the, the uh, bubbles more clearly and make them easier to read. But in this case, you've got data that is uh, related related to each other in polynomial sense. So uh, one is related to the other with a power, so it's squared. Um, and then you've got this added dimension of the, um, I can't remember what I'm plotting here, but it's indicated by the size. Great, but now let's build a uh, scatter plot of our own using Microsoft Excel. Let's do it manually first. So open a new session of Excel here. Okay. Let's use the same data, so got this. We have these polynomial scatter data. Let's just grab these. Great. And the, the easiest way to do this, and I gotta tell you, Excel has made this very, very easy. And it, it's been a uh, very useful element of Excel for a long time. You just highlight the data, hit insert, go to charts, go to scatter, click scatter, Bam, there it is. It's about the easiest thing I could think of. Uh, now you'll notice there's a few elements that are missing that were on the other version, so I'll show you how to do those now. So if you if you right-click on one of these dots, you'll get a menu, and in that menu you can click um, Add Trend Line. And you'll get a list of different kinds of trend lines. So these data are pretty, pretty straight. You know, it seems like their relationship is fairly linear, and Let's see, if you add that R-square, if you go down here, you can put display R-square value on chart. You can see that's pretty good R-square value. But you can kind of see there's a bit of a curve happening here. So I think you'd be safe to uh, change this to a polynomial. And you can see it jumped up to 0.927. So just a way of illustration, I'll show you, you can actually make these polynomials, polynomials higher order. Um, and you might get a little bit better of a, of a R square value, but I don't know how meaningful something like this is, and it's probably not even a real relationship. So this is where you have to use your intuition in most cases without getting really technical here. Uh, just look at the data and say to yourself, 
Okay. This looks like it's a curved relationship. I'm going to go for a, a polynomial order two. You know, if the data did this thing where it, it, it curved up and then it curved down again and it was real obvious, then maybe you go for the order three. Uh, if you go anything above that, you're really kind of reaching. <laughs> um, and in a lot of cases, it's better just to stick with the linear relationship. Here, I think there's a good argument to be made that it's a uh, polynomial. So let's say we want to turn this into that bubble chart that we saw earlier. So if we right click on the chart, go to change chart type. Um, I have the latest version of Excel. Yours may look a little differently than this, but the one, the thing you're looking for in here is bubble. It's usually listed under the scatter plots, but you want bubble, click bubble, click OK. Now what we've got is kind of a mess, right? So they're all the same size. You can't tell the difference between them. Um, so to get the right sizes in here, you would uh, click Select Data, hit Edit here, and you can see, oh, that's what happened. It defaulted to a bunch of ones, so they're all the same size. So let's clear that out. Left click this, highlight the size data, click OK. Now you can see there's a few different sizes in there now, but they're still very hard to tell apart from each other. So this is why I like to use the colors. So if you, if you uh, right click on these, go to Format Data Series, go to Fill and Line, you want Fill. You can see this selection here called Vary Colors by Point. Click that, um, and they change colors. They're much easier to read this way. You can also change the line. I like to use a black line. There's no reason why you sh should be able to use any color line, but this makes it stand out and pop to me. Actually, sometimes people put no line. I think that looks good too. Looks a little more professional, <laughs> but I like the solid pop, so I like to use black line. It um, it uh, emphasizes the the uh, borders, and that's basically it. Uh, pretty easy. Like I say, Excel has been has or uh, has had this for, as an element for quite a while, and uh, it, it's done pretty easily in Excel. So now there's a couple of different types of uh, scatter plots that are not within Excel that I'd like to show you that you can build using the Smart Six Sigma toolkit. So let's grab some different data here. Let's grab these. Actually, let's grab this arm span and height data, the data we saw earlier. And let's do, let's go to Smart Six Sigma, analyze, scatter plot with marginal frequencies. This in here. Paste these data in, and you can see we got something pretty similar as the plot I showed you earlier. Just for comparison, I'll show that to you again. So here's the plot I showed you earlier, but we've got some added elements here, which are these lines, these density lines. So let's make this a little easier to read by changing these axes. Uh, let's see, minimum 30. Looks like this other one's right around 30 also, so we'll change that one to 30. There we go. So you can see it, it gave you the same plot of data. We can even add that trend line, linear, you can add the R square value, do all that stuff. But we have this added bit of information, which is the density of the plot. So on the x-axis, which was the arm span, you can see it looks pretty normally distributed. And same relationship, or the same uh, density of the data on the height. It looks pretty normally distributed. And you can mess around with this here and change the number of bins that it uses, or classes, whatever you want to call them. And you can get more, you can go a bunch in here, but with these, these few data, it probably won't be very meaningful. It starts to look noisy. So in this case, I'd stick with five, but the point is, now you know that now, now you not only know what the relationship is between arm span and height, but you also know that they're normally distributed. So that's that one. There's another uh, type of or a type of uh, scatter plot in here called a quadrant analysis. So again, go to Smart Six Sigma, analyze quadrant analysis, and you get this here. Let's grab some data for that. So I have these data up here all ready to go. plug them in, and you get this type of chart. 
So I'll have a, a video later on that goes more into detail on how to use a chart like this, uh, which is kind of a combination between a scatter plot and a pick chart. Um, it's basically plotting those data points, but then sort of uh, categorizing them based on where they fall. So in this case, something that has high revenue or high profit and a high percent profit uh, would be a very interesting data point. I'll show you another way to use these quickly, which is a way to figure out how to dig into a problem uh, first, how to prioritize. So in this case, uh, I think it was an uh, assembly process and you have the defect count along the bottom axis and the cost per defect along the left axis or the, uh, the y axis and what stood out is the width so the width has a high defect count and a high cost per defect if you're digging into to improve that process you probably want to start with width this is sort of a, a combination of the approach of a Pareto chart and using a scatter diagram and a pick chart great you can get both of those through the Smart Six Sigma toolkit Smart Six Sigma is a full suite of MS Excel based Lean Six Sigma tools and it's 100% donation based. Download it for free at www.smartexceltools.com. Well, that's it for this week. I'd love to hear how you make use of scatter diagrams. Let me know in the comments. Please follow my YouTube channel, Smart Excel Tools. Connect with me on LinkedIn at www.linkedin.com slash Lee Duncan Stat. And feel free to join my group there. And of course, check out the website, www.smartexceltools.com, where you can read my blog posts and download free tools such as the Smart Six Sigma Toolkit. Thanks for watching, and until next time, remember, excel intelligently.